Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at the in-place editor which is a feature of Cubase Pro and Artist and it's something which I often use when I want to edit MIDI data whether that's on a MIDI track or on an instrument track and align it with audio. So I'll show you why you might need to use this and then we'll look at the actual thing itself. So here I've just got a little example I just knocked up. It's just a drum loop from Media Bay and some bass which is supposed to be aligned with these little bits of percussion here. So. So you can you get the idea but it's not perfectly tight and the reason for that becomes apparent if you zoom in so let's just zoom in on let's say bar two here and we can see the timing of it is slightly off so we need to be a bit later there's there's a number of ways we could do this you could do groove quantize you could just drag them all to the right etc but they it seems to vary slightly here and there and often if you're doing this with real recorded audio it may not fit to the grid at all so if you wanted to try and do this manually without resorting to this then what you would typically do is you turn your grid off you'd put your alignment point there so i tend to use the cursor as an alignment point like that and we can see we're off and then you'd open this up in the editor make sure you've got snap turned off and then you would drag that along etc that can get pretty tedious pretty quickly it's a pretty slow way to work there's a much faster way to do this and it's the in-place editor Now, the problem you may find is by default now, I don't think you get the buttons for the in-place editor. Certainly when I went to the default settings here, no in-place editor button. So the first thing we need to do is to turn that on. So you right click or two finger tap, get your menu up here and then go to track control settings. And in this case, we're going to enter it for an instrument track, but you'd probably want to do it for a MIDI track as well instrument track here and then on the left hand side we can see all these hidden controls so you see there's there's a bunch of them but the one we're interested in is edit in place so you click edit in place and then click add now that in this case will add it to the third row you can play around with the layout of this uh, but we're not going to worry about that we're happy with that okay so we're just going to do okay and now we get our edit in place which always looks to me like a uh, washing up bowl with some plates in it so I think that says more about me than anything else. Anyway, if you click this, we get the in-place editor. And this means we can now have this perfectly aligned. So we can just zoom in. And now you can see you don't even need to have your alignment point because as you drag it, your cursor will show that. And it means you can time these really, really accurately to each point in your audio. So the one thing that's typically difficult to find on this, I think it's the worst part of this, is the vertical zoom. So horizontal zoom is obviously controlled by your project window horizontal zoom, so that's GNH. But zooming in on this, it by default, it tends to be pretty small, and often you want it not to be showing um, five, six octaves, etc. It's moderately difficult to find. So if you move your mouse over the keyboard, it will work in the normal way where you can hear I can play notes, etc., if you move over this gray area, so as the at the top of those black and white keys, as it were, on the left-hand side, there's a little area where the cursor changes to a four-way cursor. That allows you to drag this up and down, which is nice. But if you want to control the zoom, you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, Option key on a Mac, and then drag left and right okay so it doesn't work in a very nice way i find but it's it's like you almost feel like it hasn't worked so initially there seems to be a bit of dead band on it and then you drag it a bit further and then it works so it takes a bit of getting used to but once you've got this at a reasonable zoom you know an octave or so you can see it's much easier to handle your normal tools work here so you can draw stuff in etc if you want to get really crazy you can even get your controller area you know you've got a full editor here it's just linked in a nice way and allows you to line these things up with audio so i find this this is one of those things where i don't use it that often but when i do need to use it it can save me hours on a, let's say aligning something to someone's audio without changing the audio if they're, they're out of time uh sorry if they've got lots of personality in their recording etc so that's the in-place editor. As ever, please like, subscribe, discuss, etc. All of those things which will help our robot algorithm overlord suggest this to other people who might also find it useful. That is, of course, assuming 
that you found it useful. I hope you have. And if you have, we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.